Hey everybody, it's Ron, and today I'm going to be talking about the fourth book in the Dune Saga titled God Emperor of Dune. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've read the first three books, and that was really a self-contained trilogy in a lot of ways. Because to my surprise, this book takes place about 3,000 years in the future. And at first I was a little worried because I wasn't ready to let go of all the characters I had come to know so well in this series. But one thing that kept me intrigued, and that was the character of Leto II. Towards the end of Children of Dune, Leto merges with the Sand Trout and outlives everyone to become the God Emperor. I couldn't wait to see how he was depicted in this book because he had fully transformed into a worm creature and it doesn't disappoint. The introduction with one of the Duncans trying to assassinate him is somehow both ominous and funny at the same time. The description of his crypt at the bottom of his citadel is really cool and it gives you a sense of this dark dungeon. But it's also funny because Leto has amazing pression powers and has lived so long that almost every interaction he has is boring to him. I laughed a little bit when Duncan is talking to him and getting ready to try and kill him and Leto is falling asleep in the middle of it because it's happened so many times. He's such a unique character in this series because he's become more than a man and it's very interesting to read how his new body works. Ever since the first book, the internal monologues have always been there, but this book takes that to a whole new level, especially with Leto. And that's a good thing and a bad thing to me because at first it was very interesting and then it got a little tiresome towards the middle. I think that's why this book took me a little longer than the other ones because I found myself having to take week long breaks from it to take a little breather. I'm glad I kept going because I started to really enjoy it again after I took a couple breaks and uh, kind of recharged my batteries for Dune. I wasn't sure if I'd like the new characters in the book, but for such a big book, there's a surprisingly short cast of characters. It was interesting to read about the differences on Arrakis, and it's apparent that the whole ecological system has changed drastically because the opening of the book takes place in a forest. This is where we meet one of the main characters, Siona, who steals Leto's journals with some of her other rebel friends, and they're chased down by wolves. It's an exciting start to the book, and it shows that Leto's rule is not popular, and Siona has a lot of hatred towards the God Emperor. One of the highlights for me besides Leto himself is his major dormo, Maneo, who is also Siona's father, which makes for an interesting dynamic. There's a lot of tension in the scenes where those two characters interact because Maneo never knows if he's going to agitate the worm part of Leto and he could be killed at any moment. The Bene Gesserit sisterhood has a minimal role in this book compared to the others, but it made sense because Leto makes them almost obsolete during his rule by having his own breeding program. I also found it interesting that he chose a whole female army to protect him called the Fish Speakers. It's basically a cult of worshippers and they even refer to him as God. The new Duncan in this book is even more moody than he is in Dune Messiah and Children of Dune and I really felt that man out of time aspect to his character. He questions Leto on so many things and slowly grows to despise him more and more as the novel unfolds. Besides Maneo, most of the characters are ignorant to Leto's golden path and they don't understand why his rule is so strict and cruel until the end. Leto tests Siona in the desert and she sees a vision of what would happen if he didn't choose his golden path to become a worm and save humanity. Siona still doesn't change her mind about wanting to eliminate Leto and even finds out about his weakness to water when it rains on their trip in the desert. Herbert takes his philosophy to new levels in this book. You could almost take out a lot of the God Emperor's quotes from his stolen journal and make a separate book that doesn't even have anything to do with Dune. To be honest, I'm more fascinated with the world building in the Dune universe than the more heady philosophical parts, but there are great quotes all over this book that I read over and over, discovering new meanings each time, and that got me more interested in that aspect of Frank Herbert's writing. Finding the humanity in Leda was also an interesting part of the book, and some of his first interactions with his love interest, Hui Nori, are kind of heartbreaking. She was created by the Ixians to purposely take his guard down, and she was designed to attract him. He knows that was their plan, but it works on him anyway and contributes greatly to his downfall. The ending is pretty tragic because of the love triangle between Hui Nori, Leto, and Duncan Idaho. Sinona ends up being in charge of the fish beakers and orders Nyla, one of the more prominent fish beaker characters in the book, 
to help her shoot and kill the God Emperor while crossing a bridge on the way to his own wedding. Duncan helps as well, but he doesn't know that Hui would also end up getting killed along with Maneo and the God Emperor by falling into the water under the bridge. Leto is built up as this almost indestructible figure, and it's strange to see him so vulnerable at the end of his life. I'm interested to see what happens next because the Sand Trout have now left his body and his consciousness sort of lives on in the Sandworms. The whole point of the Golden Path was to become the universe's most ruthless leader for a long time, and then when it was over, people would want to search the stars and will be grateful for their lives that they can now lead freely and without oppression. Like Paul before him, he saw a bleak vision of the future and humanity wouldn't have survived. But where Paul decided to run away from that golden path, Leto embraced it and sacrificed his humanity for a millennia to save the universe from its own destruction. It's a book that makes you think about it a long time after you've finished, and it was refreshing in how much it departs from what I was used to reading in the Dune franchise. I'm looking forward to meeting new characters in Heretics and Chapter House Dune, and hopefully I can give you my thoughts on those soon as well. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.